So I'm David Boltby, um, and I'm a, a visual artist and a digital artist and a creative technologist. I've been resident artist at the Making Rooms for uh, the last six months. I've been working on and off in Blackburn for the last 10 years nearly, and this residency has been an opportunity for me to explore my connection to Blackburn. I've worked quite a lot throughout Blackburn to explore people who um, live, in a, live in Blackburn's connection to Blackburn and, 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 and to the spaces they, they live in and occupy and visit and use. Um, so it's been really interesting to kind of turn that around and work with people to kind of explore you know, my connections and find out a bit more about why I work so much here. Blackburn's been an incredibly important part of my career um, and um, has, I've had projects commissioned um, in Blackburn and, you know, um, at really kind of um, important times, each one seems to sort of has moved something, something forward. Um, and I think what's amazing about Blackburn in particular is that, um, um, is that um, there's been a kind of a kind of a development, a kind of a consistency of commissioning. Um, so kind of one project's led led into another, um, and um, Rebecca, the arts officer here, I think, has got like a really strong overview of kind of a lot of creatives. All that I mean, she knows all the creatives that's happening, of course. But it's 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 all um, it all interlinks, and it's all kind of very coordinated. And there's it's sort of the kind of I think there's been I think I've observed. Um, uh, uh, I don't know if like a resurgence is to is the right way to put it, but a real strengthening of, of the arts, um, you know, in Blackburn and Darwin and sort of in the surroundings, um, and I mean that's kind of incredibly exciting. And at the time when we're hearing kind of a lot of sort of doom and gloom about arts funding and sort of arts on decline, um, to sort of see Blackburn kind of buck that trend and you know, really you know really support artists as their career develops um, is. Um, probably quite unique and, and, and certainly you know an amazing thing to to be able to be part of. I've taken quite a um, atypical I think career path. Um, I studied electrical engineering at university, uh, dropped out, uh, worked at Maplin which you might know recently shut um, for a couple of years and when I was there I started um, making things for people that would come in, the people would come in and say, oh, like, have you got a, a one of these crazy things? It's like, no, that's not sort of a, an off-the-shelf sort of thing. Um, and the next question would usually be, can you can you make it? And it kind of got, to, and, and Matthew were actually kind of quite supportive of their staff doing that, much to their kind of credit. And um, it got to the point where I was making so much stuff that I had to set up a company to, to do that. I've also been making stuff for um, an artist from Bristol called Luke Jerram, who, um, you may have encountered, he's done a project called Street Pianos. We put pianos in the street, people can play them. They're kind of all over the place. They're kind of quite well known now, much in demand. And recently he, um, he's also made a, a blow up sculpture of the moon. So kind of typical conversation would be that Luke said, oh, um, you know, you can, like, you can play like a wine glass and it sings. And he's like, yeah. So, um, uh, so I've got these big bowls and I'm going to put a pad on top and rotate them and they'll, they'll sing. Great, yeah, and I'm going to pump water in it. I'm going to be three. I'm going to pump water in and out, and um, it will change the pitch. It's like, great. So he's like, so Dave, it's going to be controlled by the moon. Like, right, is it now? And um, then he says, but don't worry, because I've borrowed the gravity meter from the University of Plymouth. So all you have to do is kind of hook that up to the bowls, and, uh, and there we go. So anyway, we did, we did that and toured, toured that work for a few years. Um, we did other work where people slept in pods. And um, these were all things which were devised, devised by Luke. Um, and um, people slept in pods and they wore eye masks. And when they hit REM sleep, we um, detected that and then played them different sounds and tried to influence, influence their dreams. So kind of some quite kind of challenging, um, but really, really kind of nice, nice projects. So that kind of given me a bit of an insight into sort of alternative kind of paths for things. Cause you know, by the time, by that point, Luke was doing, um, you know, beginning to do really well. Was, um, working full time as an artist, so it was kind of like a real kind of um, inspiration, really, and, and really demonstrated that kind of a career as a kind of full time creative.
could be possible and that I kind of already had some of the skills I could kind of take forward into that. So I thought, right, well, there you go. Let's do that. People, I think, people and places. So a lot of my, a lot of my practice um, revolves around responding to places that I visit and thinking about um, how, I think a lot of it is, I've, I've got this thing about like looking at detail and um, how once you know the detail of somewhere, um, you feel much more kind of at home there. Um, you just sort of notice it kind of quite sort of, or once you begin to notice it, you see it more and more. So if you think about like, you know, when you go on holiday and you turn up to so say, you're just going somewhere for like a couple of nights, or you go, you go, you go away and you meet some friends somewhere and like, you know, you turn up and like nobody knows where they are. You don't quite know what's around. You haven't found the loo. You don't know where you're going to sleep, all these things. And by the time, and then you sort of you have to learn all these things. And by the time you leave, your relationship with that place is like, totally changed and I think you can translate that quite well into kind of artistic process so not in terms of necessarily output but I did a project a few years ago with another artist called Scott Farlow and we were looking at play and play spaces in Blackburn and we did kind of lots of kind of fun interventions and one thing which we did was to stick a line of masking tape from uh, the play park in Kendall Street at one end of Alton Street all the way to Corporation Park and the play park there. And that's about like a kilometre and a half, maybe two kilometres. So I literally crawled on my hands and knees sticking tape to the pavement all the way down Alton Street. And it looked, I mean, it was great. You had this like big blue line of tape, got some really, really nice masking tape. But also it means that like, now if I go to Alton Street, like I kind of know where all the cracks in the pavement are and like, you know, where the chewing gum's stuck because I've actually like seen it at kind of snail space. But, you know, so you sort of, you feel you know it much more. Um, and then through kind of developing that relationship with somewhere, you begin to notice details, I think, and then I think it's quite interesting to sort of look at what those details are and expose the ones that either you respond to or quite a lot of the time I work with other people, so sort of maybe observe what other people respond to as well and kind of develop develop something from, from that. I've got a website at um, redart.co.uk. Um, I've got uh, Facebook, Instagram, as well. I've got Twitter, but I can't quite work it out. I don't really use it very much. <laughs>